Okay, this is the April 17th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. We're being taped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing by residents later and uh, for the general public that likes to watch our select board meetings. Okay, first item on the agenda, minutes for April 9th. Has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes? Any great. additions or okay. corrections? No? All right, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda, we have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $122,604, a payroll warrant of $104,781, and a payroll deduction warrant of $25,000. Eight hundred and ninety-seven dollars. I'll make a motion that we accept those warrants. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next item is meetings attended by select board members since our last select board meeting. Bob? So, Tom and I went to a meeting together. He can talk about it more. Um, but we went to the resiliency workshop that we had with Ashfield. It was over in town hall. Uh, Conway hosted Ashfield down here. The Furcog uh, ran the meeting, mm -hmm. and it was basically it was I was I would it was it was a meeting I didn't know what to expect. I mean, it was about a four and a half hour meeting, so it was going to be long, and we really didn't have enough time to do all the work that we tried to do. And taking a number of topics, we talked about a lot of ways we could improve the response to storms and other and preparedness. Um, between us and Ashfield, and you know, we share the, the whole uh, the river and and um, protecting Ashfield Lake and uh, floods and all that kind of stuff. And uh, and fortunately, at the end, then Furcog has to take all of the ideas that everybody had, and they're going to prepare them into a report. And and, mm -hmm. and 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 I'm glad that. We weren't expected to do that during the meeting. I mean, it's, it'll be very tough, but we, you know, we, we produced a lot of ideas and then voted on which ones we liked the best, and they're mm -hmm. going to then try to put them together into a report. So it was, it was excellent. Good, and uh, and that will turn into a plan. And when we have the plan, that gives it, that makes us eligible for some grant funds. Oh, great. So that's the end end goal of all of this. Okay. There was a good collection of Conway people. I think we were better represented than Ashfield, but it was great to have a lot of Ashfield people there. And, and there's a police chief, uh, the fire... Um, the Ashfield... The deputy the fire, fire chief. Or, or fire, chief. The fire chief. Fire chief, yeah, fire chief uh, and, and police chief. Yeah. Uh, from Ashfield and... And, uh, and Randy was there for a while. And uh, Ron. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Uh, that was good. Yeah, this is one of two partnerships in this program, regional partnerships. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, the other one's out in Central Mass. And uh, so that's uh, another uh, distinction we have, cooperating. Good, good. good. And that was it for me. Okay. Well, I had a uh, same time your meeting was going on. I was at a meeting at Frontier Regional for the renovation the committee meeting on the building maintenance plans we're putting together and I have a report to give you later and I will discuss it later in when we get to the uh, concerns of the slide. Okay. okay. Or items not anticipated? Or items not anticipated, yep. One or the other. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Robert. Uh, okay, last week I had, um, I went to the Hampshire Group Insurance Trust meeting. Tom was there as well. And um, apparently what they're going to do is leave the plan as it is, but they're going to, to raise the uh, other premiums. Uh, it was 4.7% at, at the high end and 3.3% uh, at the low end. So those are very reasonable increases. And I think, now how does that affect, how's that going to affect our advisory committee? We that, Makes that moot. Yeah. 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 We'll have to reconstitute something next year. Yeah. So that, that basically. We'll, we'll go through that process next year and it'll be cleaner for all the towns, I'm sure. Right. Because the, <clears throat> the, reason they, the reason they generally had to do that was because there was some, there were a number of towns that didn't follow the procedure exactly the way it should have been done. And um, apparently if, um, 
uh, the plan would have gone through the process of a change, those towns would have been sued by the union. So, uh, mm. is there some towns bowing out? No, no. Um, everybody seems to be in. Yeah. Uh, I didn't. I didn't hear anybody. Hmm. I didn't hear anybody uh, who was who was bowing out of the Hampshire Group Insurance hmm. Trust Plan. I haven't heard any anyway. Hmm. I heard uh, one. I, th I think Sunderland might be going with my end. Right, Sunderland. That's what I meant. Talk oh, okay. One of the Sunderland right. selectmen, and he uh, said they were definitely buying out and going to go with my. I I heard something about that. Yeah. And he I said think. he thought there were three or four other t communities that were thinking of doing the same thing. I don't. know. Yeah, I think, sure I think they're taking a big risk by doing that, especially since the uh, the trust has kept the plan the way it is for this year. But anyway, um, I also had a Massachusetts Municipal Association board meeting last week uh, in Boston. Um, well, we talked about things that are happening with the budget. Uh, the budget's looking pretty good. It's going through the the House version, the Senate version, and the governor's budget. And um, things are looking good because of, of the tax revenue, which is up mm -hmm. because of more people um, contributing before the end of 2017 right, right. because they won't be able to take those deductions in 2018. So um, a DOR is flush with money, but that's just a, a temporary thing. That's a thing. It's a temporary thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Temporary. Watch out next year. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so um, that was one of the big things at that meeting. Um, I also went to the uh, local government advisory commission meeting uh, with the lieutenant governor and uh, Secretary Ash, Secretary Heffernan, Secretary Beaton, Director, um, yeah. Sean, what's Sean's name? D-O-R. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Sean. Um, and she talked about how well they're doing with the community compact. Cronin. Cronin, yeah. How well um, they're doing with um, green communities and how there are a number of towns that are getting their second round of grants from green communities. And uh, they're very happy that the compact is going through another round with, with, with towns as well. So that was very encouraging. And, uh, and Heffernan, who's the, uh, who's the finance guy, was, was talking again about all the money coming in that has come in. <laughs> and that it's only temporary. But he's very happy to have all that money right now. Um, I had a meeting of the Massachusetts Selectmen's Association Board of Directors. And we were talking about planning the rest of the year's meetings, hoping to get better attendance at um, the regional meetings of the Selectmen's Association, and uh, basically getting some some interesting topics that will will draw a crowd. So that was that's what that was about. I had a FERCOG executive committee meeting last week, um, and we talked about a number of things, especially some of the changes at, as in personnel at the COG. Um, we just lost our finance director. She retired and we brought on a new lady who is uh, who looks good. And uh, there's a number of other people who are retiring or who are leaving for one reason or another and they're looking at uh, filling those slots. So it's, uh, it's a challenge, especially when you have a, a staff that's as good as the, the fur mm. COG is. So, so that was my meeting week. I mean, when did you sleep? Uh, it wasn't. It was a rough week, week <laughs> like for say, sleep last week. Well, he drives oh, during the drive in and out. Yeah, citizens' concerns. I don't see any citizens, so I don't think we have any concerns. Old business. We have annual town meeting review warrant motions and funding sources. Tom, what do we have? Uh, you should all have a copy of the uh, the motion motions here. Mm -hmm. um, pretty typical. Um, first, we don't read the town report. Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, uh, as last year, I think it, out, it worked out very well having the four sections laid out the way they were Absolutely. in the warrant, because yes. it was confusing yeah. before yeah, when they had that. Jumping yeah. back and forth. Yeah. 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 So, so that's how that yeah, is. Yeah, th this, this makes it much, much more clear. 
And this, um, you know, motions for borrowing are always complex, mm -hmm. and this is no no uh, exception. So this is really long for. So this will all have three. to get read. Yeah. yeah, that's that's the formal statement. Um, for capital stabilization, a hundred thousand from free cash and twenty-five thousand from general stabilization. Again, uh, are the general stabilization fund very healthy at over four hundred thousand uh, dollars? But not something we should get really in the habit of doing. I'm hoping we can have more free cash later. We'll have those figures for um, Tommy in case yeah. somebody asks, right? How much yeah. did each count? Um, The 50000 for highway garage stabilization is raising and appropriating. That's one of the, I think that's the biggest raise and appropriate item. Um, just because I think everybody supports that. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Uh, 25000 from free cash to the grammar school capital stabilization. Um, then we have the... Uh, 48,000 from capital stabilization for the police department cruiser. Another capital stabilization for the, the highway item, the excavator. Uh, the grammar school capitalization, again, now I brought that down to 24,000. It looks a little odd there because it's actually in red in the version that I have. Um, that I brought down uh, $8,000 um, just to give a little bit of wiggle room, that's about what the water tank liner is going to cost. The the well pump replacement actually cost about eleven thousand mm -hmm. dollars, but some of that was because it was on an emergency basis and over the weekend. Right. And how's that getting paid for? Um, that's coming out of the reserve. It fund. is. Yeah. The finance committee has yet to meet actually. Yeah. So, I, but I did get uh, Allen's agreement that he, he thought that should go through, so I'm very much hoping it does. Yeah. <laughs> Theoretically, we shouldn't spend the money until it's approved, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> this is money next year's reserve fund? No, no. No, this year's. Oh, yeah. We, oh, we have, yeah, and, 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 we, and we, we have it, so yeah. that's fine. Um, so that'll just lower free cash for next year a yeah. little bit? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, but, but it's better than... than not the, it's coming out of the reserve fund from this year. Yeah, it would go back in the general if fund and then turn it. into free cash <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah. For, for next year. Um, yeah, so it, it does take a little bit away from that. Um, then uh, we have plenty in the ambulance receipts reserved account for their operating expenses. Not really enough to bother putting... Um, money from their receipts reserved account into ambulance stabilization this year again because they don't have the the income mm -hmm. we we might see better figures by the end of the year but it's a good idea to leave a fair amount in receipts reserved anyway in case they need it mm -hmm. so that's that's a secondary funding source for the ambulance department um, then there's an, another capital stabilization item for the uh hydraulic boom lift, uh, a general stabilization, because it was late and unexpected and didn't get into a, and wasn't part of our capital plan, mm -hmm. I didn't, so I didn't want to draw down capital stabilization for that, 17000 for the ambulance department, um, 12000 from capital stabilization again for the uh, Kubota tractor and snowblower. Uh, 10000 from free cash to other post-employment benefits. Mm -hmm. um, good idea for that to happen every year. Yeah. Um, I, uh, then there's uh, some overlay reserve money. That's the money that the assessors hold um, that comes from <coughs> exemptions and abatements. And... and uh, Whatever they don't spend uh, is left in overlay reserve, and so they like so they like to pay for their for some of their added expenses from that account. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's um, for their uh, assessor software conversion. Um, 
Another one from General Stabilization, again, because it was unexpected for the Frontier mm -hmm. tractor. Mm -hmm. And again, they were not interested in changing the wording for that. And But this will be common among all the towns. Yes. 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 Um, then another one from Overlay Reserve for the next recertification of property values. That's so again, the assessor's money there. Um, and raising and appropriating, because this is a new position, the town has to really buy into this, um, for a, uh, an administrative assistant for the, uh, for the permitting bodies um, for $5,500 little over. Uh, free cash for local library operations and expenses. I understand that the library is very, very proud that they have never asked for that money from the town. Mm -hmm. um, they, they do have an endowment. Uh, free cash. By, by putting, yeah. by transferring, but you know, by providing the library with that money, we're allowed to be a member of the regional yes. library system. Right. right. I mean, that, yeah, you, we, you are, know, we are accredited by the state. That's right. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's a good, good investment. Oh, yes. Um, and $1,000 from free cash for the Christmas tree fund. Again, more than they need, but, you know, we, we, we don't want to be, uh, you know, this year they could have used some money and we, we didn't have it available, so let's make sure there's enough in there. Um, 500 from free cash for the flag fund. Again, a little bit more than we need. It's probably uh, two, two um, years worth there. So just a little, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a lot of money, but having a, a little in reserve there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Authorizing the treasurer to spend fifteen thousand for the Medicare revolving fund. We re we created the Medicare revolving fund. It's going to get money in, and she wants to be able to spend it out of that account. That will save her work, and this will be something that will have to be on the agenda every year to have the town authorize right. her right. to uh, spend that money from the revolving fund. Right. Um, for Article Twenty Three. Um, these numbers are still in flux. Uh, still, the uh, the first four numbers, the four thousand and the three eight thousand, are going to come down a little bit. The last one went up from thirty to fifty five because mm. I made a mistake in calculating it in the warrant. Mm -hmm. Now the thing is that this doesn't come out of taxes or out of a stabilization fund. It comes out of the three percent surcharge. Right. It's an absolute figure. Right. So, this is what we're going to pay them anyway. But if your tax bills go up this year, you're going to be nailed with an additional percentage of that three percent. Correct. It's three percent of the overall tax bill of each, each household, right? Yes. Yes, but so that, that, but the that's what it is. goes up this year. Yes. That dollar amount's going to go up too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, but that happens oh, I know. I automatically. Understand. I understand. So, so this is uh, it's more or less of a, a formal change, and, and I apologize for this. This is what I was working on ten minutes before the last meeting, and mm -hmm. uh, I was just a little bit distracted, unfortunately. Um, the number that's in there is actually the total of the first four numbers, rather than the total subtracted from the total figure that I had. But they're all going to change anyway because uh, I haven't gotten the final figure from Lee. Mm -hmm. um, we could use these numbers because this is just an authorization and the numbers will actually be less than this. <coughs> Fine. So push comes to shove, we can use these numbers mm -hmm. and we're authorized to spend this. We will only have a little bit less. What she hasn't done is, is uh, taken out the abatements. Right. Or, okay. or the exemptions from okay. the Community Preservation Fund. Okay. And the reason that it's less, it's actually less than it has been um, in recent years, because of the way they reclassified the property with each parcel. If you have a parcel on one side of the road right across from your house, it now counts as a separate lot. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those lots are valued at less than $100,000 and so are exempt. Okay 
from the community mm. preservation. And some people right. have bowed out of the community exemption program. Yeah, there are, there are uh, cases in which Tax people can do that. And things, there's right ways that they can get out of it if they don't want to. Uh, especially if uh, I think there's an elderly exemption. Income, uh, yeah, yeah and an income yeah. one. Uh, then there's the... Uh, so, so the amount oh. that we will actually transfer would be this amount or less? Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. is there a way? Yeah. We're not going to have that in the motion, though? To say something like that? We don't need to. If we this is okay. authorized, we can, you can always spend less. Okay. This is just an authorization. So, um, and I, I plan to have a little half sheet explaining the difference in the numbers to people because I would be concerned if the number came in $25,000 higher than it was in the warrant. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I think people uh, deserve an explanation of that. Good. Mm -hmm. um, there's the Mosquito Control District. Very simple. Uh, much simpler than it was before, I'll, yeah. I'll point out. Then uh, there's the 3% tax on uh, on retail marijuana sales. For, for our many dispensaries in town. Yeah, we get um, one for every five liquor, liquor stores. stores. Yeah, yeah, liquor licenses yeah. or something yeah. like that. That's right. Um, and then uh, this... this uh, I don't know, I wish I had the uh, warrant in front of me. Um, form and conduct of, oh yes. This is um, the one that says it's, it's the 60 day limit. And it's clearly, it clearly means the annual town meeting um, because special town meetings certainly get called with less than two months notice. Yeah. So that's, that's what that's about. Um, then, uh, this next one can come in very handy to allow the town clerk to make formal changes to the bylaws. That's changes in numbering, lettering. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's, th th those are the basic things it, she can change is the numbering and lettering of a... Administrative and, and organizational. Basis. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and that will... Um, that will actually go a long way towards making the town's bylaws, towards codifying them, and um, making it easier to to track changes and show changes mm -hmm. and and uh, see what bylaws we have. It's it's they're just all lumped together now for the most yeah. part. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to try again. And the reason. Um, that I'm doing this is first to save money. Uh, I think it's po it might be possible now because people, everybody except you know six people, should have internet um, by the time the next town meeting rolls around. I will you know ask if anybody wants a hard copy. You know you can sign up for a hard copy if you want. So we'll have you know some years of transition, and we'll see how many people actually want the hard copy. Uh, and uh, now that we're including, for instance, the minutes of the town meetings, which we should have been all along, it's gotten much longer. Mm -hmm. So even though it's a better document, it's a fuller, more accurate document of the record of what went on in town that year, it's more expensive to produce. Mm, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, it, this year it's going to cost over $5,000. Mm -hmm. So. Um, when Joe Markarian saw it, he said, oh, that's an easy one. Just, <laughs> just email just, it. Just don't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I tried it. <laughs> He's surprised. Maybe it's not so easy. Yeah. And I would, you know, not giving too much of my personal opinion, but uh, being, you know, the kind of person I am, I would want a copy of it. But that's just because. And you could get one. I'm like me. That's right. So. Um, so that's that. Then there's uh, the planning board bylaws. Uh, one of them is the, uh, the the first one is the large construction bylaws. The second right. one is the extension of the moratorium. Right. Okay. Uh, and then um, the uh, proposed bylaws, the citizen petition for the safe community, the proposal in Article <coughs> 32 is the town landscaping. And the proposed bylaw in Article 33 is the renewable energy, 100% renewable energy resolution. 
Right. So those are just referring to what's in the warrant. Okay. Um, so now is the time when we can. So there's all passed. And what's our percentage uh, increase in the tax bill since next year? Don't know that yet. Mm -hmm. I'm, wait, I'm waiting for, yeah. for Lee to get They're back online, get online and then. talk with her. Because um, they're going to ask you that, Tommy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If it all passes. And, and see, on, on these, you've only got $55,000 of raising appropriate. Plus, of course, you've got mm -hmm. some Article 2, right? The, the school's Plus a big one, two. yeah. So, Article 2 is now up to... Four and a half. 260, 270 thousand something like that so 200 uh -huh. roughly 250 is a, a dollar. dollar so it's over yeah, it's about a buck and a half probably or it's, it's over a dollar anyway um oh probably buck and a quarter maybe buck and a half. yeah something like that and you know i think everybody realizes that that's not sustainable but everybody also realizes that there's not a lot to be done about it at some point you know some Towns just put their, their school budgets on an override and uh, say, okay, you want you want to get up there and we'll do an override. But that'll not sustainable either. I mean, no, nope, not not once you get up to twenty five dollars. Yeah, right. So uh, I think I think we're we're really seeing the effects of less. Um, well, you know, level funding on the state level. If you if you take that over a decade or two. Inflation, even though it might be rising slowly, does rise a bit. Mm -hmm. So the effect is proportionately a little bit more each year on the town. So over 10 or 20 years of level funding, it turns into um, it turns into a real deficit situation. So I think that's the structural problem, and it's not just Conway. Um, no, it's everybody. But it it's certainly everybody. is oh, yes. everyone in Conway who's affected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we won't be first, but we're going to watch a number of towns. There's there's a couple dozen already that are at twenty five. Yeah, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. They'll hit this. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Okay, next item on the agenda is discussion of um, House Bill twenty nine thirteen, an act relative to environmental justice and toxics reduction. Um, has everybody read through this bill? Yeah, the whole thing. Um, yeah, I, I. Not really a lot of changes to it. Yeah, that's on the language. I'm basically in agreement with it. You know, um, it sets up an advisory committee um, to study uh, environmental justice situations throughout the state. And I think that's a that's a good thing to do. And I, I'll email you the link because it is an individual signing. Situation. So yeah, so I guess it turns out that we don't have to vote on it as a board. No. So uh, yeah, um, I, I suppose not if it's an individual. Um, we, we could. Yeah, yeah you could. could. All right, I, I just to just to make our sentiment known. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we approve the signing of a letter in support of uh, H twenty nine thirteen, an act relative to environmental justice and toxics reduction in the state. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And okay. And I, I, I will note that the, the item that we're uh, skipping over, appointing Sarah Newman to the Board of Registrars, uh, she's away uh, this week, but she will be around next week, and we've asked her to come in Good. and meet with you and uh, get appointed Good. next week. Okay, so we table that for this week. All right, next item is the health care plan change update. I think uh, John gave a we were quite, in, quite a good crazy of that earlier. Okay. Uh, there will not be a change in the plan mm -hmm. uh, this year. Just uh, a little bit of an increase, right? Um, yeah, yes. uh, yeah. A four point something very, percent increase. Very reasonable. Yeah. And uh, the, as a result of that, I will say the trust will uh, draw down another $3 million from its reserves, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which it has about $20 million now. Now, the Hampshire Trust has like to keep their reserve level at a higher level than some of the other trusts and, and insurance groups. Um, and I know that the, uh, the Massachusetts Teachers Union was questioning uh, how much it had in its reserve. There were two points I'm not sure that they understood, the first of which is that uh, 
they, the trust has been in the process of drawing down its reserves for several years. Uh, that it was at a much in, an even higher level they, before. They were, they were up at about twenty nine million at one point. I, I, I think yeah. they were. Yeah, I think they were higher than that. Um, over the last, you know, for those four years mm -hmm. when we when we didn't have any any increase at all, and um, but maybe it was twenty nine, and now they're down to about twenty. The um, I think the uh, the union. Um, also was counting a figure of 30 million instead of 20 million for what they had currently. So, uh, and I, I understand from our treasurer that uh, that was just looking at the figures um, uh, in, in a way that uh, it was understandable, but it really didn't reflect the, the situation as mm. it was. So uh, I'm hoping that they can, they can agree that, that uh, Keeping that kind of a buffer is useful for being able to absorb any sudden shocks to the system, which we've seen before. We've seen, mm -hmm. you know, large rises, and I think the trust has done a good job of, of shielding its members from that. So, uh, those were just a couple points that that I would add to uh, to what John said earlier. By putting this off a year, does that mean that the change will be bigger next year? The increase. I, I think the the increase is a year to year increase. Um, so, and and I don't think that it's particularly predictable, mm -hmm. uh, depending largely as things these things do on pharmaceutical prices um, and the number of claims. So yeah. there's no real way to predict either of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, items not anticipated, forty eight hours in advance. Bob, do you have something sure. for us? The. Uh, Frontier Re Renovation Committee has put together a somewhat of a proposal uh, with Joe McCarrion's assistance, and Joe put out this uh, options of uh, 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 five-year bonds, seven-year bonds, ten-year bonds, uh, things like that. That they're asking to, uh, I received this the other day. They're asking that we take it to the back to the boards of selectmen and the finance committees, if at all possible and try to have you people all get together and come up with some kind of general idea as to what you would kind of prefer. It's not going to guarantee anything because it has to be a unanimous vote of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the well, not unanimous, it has to be a majority well, vote of towns. the district. Okay. But, uh, so the, the committee can have some general idea as to if what type of direction they're heading in. So, and it breaks it down to the cost for the town of Conway, which is just strictly the town of Conway sheet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and uh, which is eight uh, sixteen point two two percent of the project. Yeah, yeah. Of this remaining dollar project, and it spells it out year by year as to what the cost for the town is going to be, and depending on how you fund it, how you want to have it funded, as to what the actual cost is going to be. So if I would have Tom take these and make a bunch of copies up for the finance committee members mm -hmm. and the board of selectmen, mm -hmm. and I'll just keep one of them. Okay. Myself. Yeah, great. And hopefully, I would ask that we set up a meeting uh, soon. I think our next meeting is in uh, May. May. They kind of like an answer back at the next meeting, which is in May. No, excuse me, it's April. Oh, no, May 3rd is this next meeting. So. so you'll be looking for support from the board? On, on Looking for guidance from the board okay. as to what direction they think where they would like to see the town goes. Town going, okay. and that's a Thursday, May third. May third's a Thursday, so that that's when I have to take my report back to them. So, so when Frontier originally presented this, huh. there wasn't a lot of support among the selectmen and the. There wasn't, who were but hurt. we have. I mean, there's a board of selectmen member on it. Each, right. Each so has, board, has it board increased, board. or is it getting? Or well, we you, instead of what we've done is instead of asking to come out and ask the town for a three and a half million dollar up front. Bam! Give us the money. We broke it down over a five, seven, or ten-year uh -huh. plan, and and as you you'll see when when you get your forms, uh, how much money is going to be spent each year. And what we did is we prioritized. We have a big list that they had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We cut some stuff out. Yeah. Like the tractor. Like the tractor, which should have been maintenance and some other things, yeah. smaller things. And the biggest hit is year one, which was not this year. It's next fiscal year. Mm -hmm. It has to get voted next spring. And that is 
uh, basically six hundred thousand dollars is the biggest hit for the track replacement, mm. which we are going to be looking at and hearing further reports on that in May third. Okay. About what the cost of that is. So, uh, and then we broke down uh, there's other areas. We broke down the other items. Something can be spread all over a longer period, and uh, less uh, some that need to be fixed right away. So, that actually cut the cost down quite a bit to the towns. Well, that's going to all at once to hit the whole three million at once. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. So we'll be able to discuss that and uh, but ask us to have a meeting with our select boards and the finance committee together and see if we can. Can you try to arrange something like that, Tom? I will try. Okay. Good. Thank you. Great. Now, how many more meetings do we have until May 3rd? We have two more meetings until May 3rd. Yeah. Okay. So why don't we try to arrange that? Um, for next week with the finance committee, and we'll get get this out to everybody. And, and I will try. Can we, can we do that? Um, good to have the possibility of a backup the following week. Okay. Uh, All depending right. on who's around. You may want to uh, you may want to invite uh, the school committee representative from Conway, Phil Cantor, in. He's a, in a meeting with us sure, too. Sure. He can add some of the. Uh, okay. Fine. Some, some of the, he he, he kind of they've been doing it a little bit longer than I have, so they understand a little bit better. Because I've only been in it a few months, so okay. um, they've been talking about that for a few years. So mm -hmm. with the school board, we can give the school board's take on it too. So um, that's a good thing to do, I think. Good. I have another item, and I don't know whether you wanted to talk about that under uh, this uh, uh, item. Not has been forty-eight hours in advance. I ha had met yesterday with uh, Mr. Greg Rose on his. Pro uh, he came to meet me about. We talked to him about before. He talking about making, talking about maybe possibly wanting to sell his property, mm -hmm. and the town has the first right of refusal. He claims now he has an offer of two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars on the table from somebody. Wow. So he would like us, and he knows that we have ninety days to accept or reject it, because of course the rate of deeds words, I guess, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think we need to we can discuss it now or whatever. I don't care. Um, well, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see something in writing from Greg. Well, I understand okay. that, too. Yeah. He uh -huh. knows he's going to formally have to do that in writing. I told him he okay. had, and he's yeah. going to send it in the registered letter to the town. Fine. Okay. Yeah, so, that, that would start. And that'll start day. the 90 days. Yeah. That'll yeah. start the 90 days. Yeah. Because yeah. I seriously think we need to have some major discussions about this because... I think it's a possibility if the town and the town was to purchase this property, it's going to guarantee a giant well that the town doesn't have right now of 50 to 60 gallons a minute. Yeah. It's going to guarantee that we probably could convert that storage barn that we rent now into the coal storage for the highway department, which should save, you remember what the figure was? Was it three, four hundred thousand dollars a purpose coal storage shed? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we got to spend a little bit of money to do it, pour a floor on there and put some overhead doors, larger overhead doors, but that's still a big savings. Absolutely. I'm not uh, sure it's the, 10 the, days the, worth, the, but... The yeah. savings that we... And, they, and there's a beautiful leach field there. Mm -hmm. It's just put them on them recently. Mm -hmm. The coal cup put a nice oversized leach field in there, so that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, that cost of this purchase might decrease the op actual cost of the highway facility. Sure. To offset that totally. Yeah, yeah. And if you uh, weren't going to build your highway garage right away, you know, you could always use the possibility, of, I mean, maybe the police department can move in down there temporarily or something, the office space. Because mm. he's fixed the whole floor, bottom floor, it's pretty well fixed up now. Upstairs isn't, but the, his base level floor in the house has been fixed up pretty decent. So um, I haven't been in the seat yet, but uh, so we, should get it. we could use that for something at this point in time. And then my thoughts also were, and this is only my thoughts, you can take it like a grain of salt if you want, that might be a real good location to eventually put the rest of the highway garage right there where that old building was. It's sitting right now. Mm -hmm. Get it down off the hill, a little bit further away from the town's uh, school well, mm -hmm. and in a footprint similar to there, and you could have the main building and you could have the cold storage building right next to it. Mm -hmm. It's already there. Okay. So it's, it's, it's worth looking at, I think. I mean, 
Yeah, we can discuss well, then, all, yeah. all these details in, in an executive session. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Um, Tom, you have an update for us? Yeah. Committee news, some final air sealing work will be done tomorrow and Thursday on the town hall. Once the work is approved by the building inspector in the state, this will complete our first Green Communities grant once the paperwork is done, <coughs> and then we can apply for competitive grants. Good. So there's, there's a few things in there that are important, and <laughs> uh, so it's not a done deal yet, but we're, we're very close. Uh, uh, the oil spill had its final cleanup yesterday, and we should avoid having to pay an extra $1,500 for going over the 60-day limit mandated by the Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, the town report is at the printers, together with the warrant. It will again be sent out in envelopes, as the warrant and town report are too large to use sticky tabs. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that that gives them a cleaner copy anyway. So. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, it's more expensive again, but yeah. um, it should be going to the mail house tomorrow, or maybe one today. And Lisa is planning to pick them up on Friday for distribution to the three post offices. So they should get to people before the pre-town meeting, which this year is scheduled for April 10th, two weeks prior to town meeting. I know in the past it's been one week prior to town meeting. Excuse me, Tom. I think you meant April 30th, not April yeah. 10th. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. 30th. Yeah. April 3rd. Thank you. Yep. What time does that start? Uh, Usually seven, 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 isn't it? 7.30, I think. 7.30? Double check on the website. Yeah. There's... Okay. Um, nope, 7 to 8.30. 7. Okay. Yep. Okay. Seven o'clock, eight thirty. Uh, for town meeting, uh, Bruce Joannette has tentatively set up the select board moderator and finance committee tables and chairs on the stage to make room for more seats, as there has been at least one standing room only uh, at the annual town meeting, uh, at least once. There's been standing room only at the uh, town meeting. The stage is narrow, though, so the tables would have to be angled considerably, and it may not work out. Um, John, maybe you can go down there sometime with me, or, or anybody go down and yeah, we'll see what's set, we'll look it over. See, we'll see look what's it set up yeah. on the stage. Um, uh, it's still, it, it's better than having to create overflow space. I am working with Chris Collins to see what it would take to do that. Uh, we went down and visited the, the school before. The best case would be able uh, to be able to use a classroom rather than the cafeteria, and I'm checking with the school to see whether that could work. You know, I would understand fully if um, the teacher said, no, actually, I don't want people tromping in and out of my classroom. Right. But all of the classrooms have smart boards, so he could just hook right into that and project what was going on at town mm -hmm. meeting on a large screen <coughs> with people, you know, seated in front of it. Um, it, I'm, I'm hoping it would be possible, but uh, not, not, you know, expecting it. If that were not the case, um, we have money in our, in our PEG access account. We could pay for uh, the extra equipment that would be needed. There would be there would be cameras, monitors, and audio mm -hmm. that would have to go back and forth. Uh, I don't want to get into a situation where town meeting would have to be adjourned, and we figure out all this stuff on the fly and wait two weeks and you know have it again. Yeah, no, no. Um, okay. that that would not be a good possibility. So, uh, I mean, that would not be a good uh, event. Um, and I'm just a little bit worried. Um, having seen the standing room only before, uh, I appreciate that people are, are, are willing to come in and stand, um, but it's not something we should expect people to do. And sure. There is, 
you know, the seating capacity in that room is theoretically something like 345 seats. We've had 240, we've, we've had 250 people at an annual town meeting. That's standing. Um, and, you know, so the first thing to do is create an extra 40 seats right. in front. Um, and then if we find at some point that people are actually standing, then being able to feed something out to another room, mm -hmm. you have to have a secondary moderator. There are ways of doing all of this. Mm -hmm. Because um, you're on stage, you're going to have to sh shorten the row of seating it's, so it's, they get a view of the stage. Yeah, it's too complicated if we go into an overflow area like that. Well, um, if it's necessary, it's necessary. So yeah, um, I, I would prefer that it not happen. How many seats do we have for that, for that room? Yeah, um, how many chairs? I, I think... If you if if they bring down the chairs from the cafeteria, I think there are about 290. Uh, so we we don't reach the capacity of the room at that. We would have to bring extra chairs. We can get our from the, guys to bring down the town chairs. hall um, if we had to. Right. Um, so that's. Uh, but again, we're, we're, you know, we're talking uh, delays and awkwardness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it, it, it's. Um, it may just, drive a bigger crowd this year because something. of that uh, safe city thing, but then it might taper right off again after another year or two. You know, I mean, who knows? I mean, it, exactly, success. exactly. Yes. So, all I want to know is, I, I just want to know what it would take to do that, so that we can think about being prepared if it looks like it's going to get up you know, substantially above that. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's certainly a good problem yeah. to have. Yeah. You know, that yeah. many people want to come <coughs> to the meeting. So. Yeah, and you know, I just noticed it with the standing room only crowd. Yeah, yeah. And thought, and you know, not all of the seats in the that's right. auditorium were All the were seats filled, weren't full. You know, yeah. so it, it, some of that's choice anyway. Yeah, sure, there are people that are standing. Years from now, it may come to the point where you go to a different type of town government because of it. Well, you know, and I think people people value the the chance to participate. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would like to put that off as as long as possible. You know, if we don't need to do it, let's not. But oh, I know th th I this this would be this would be a serious indicator. Yeah, yeah. That. it's true. Uh, and just finally, um, I have purchased table skirting for the Select Board and Finance Committee if we're all seated up there on the that's, stage. That's yeah. great, Tom. And even if we're not. Yeah. 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 Just a good idea. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Concerns of the Select Board. We have any concerns? No concerns. No okay. Concerns. Mail. Okay. We got a piece of mail from um, our principal at Frontier, Darius Modesto. Uh, and he's invited us to the graduation on June 1st at 7 p.m. Uh, and also class night on Wednesday the 30th at 7 p.m. So what I'll do, if, if anybody's interested, uh, Tom, would you would you copy this and, and give a copy to, to Bob and, and yeah, Robert? Yeah, right. in, in wow. case in yep. case they want to yep. uh, to attend. Okay. You'll have one soon enough. Yeah. Okay, any announcements? We have no announcements. All right. Next meeting is scheduled for Monday the 23rd here in the town office. It's at the uh, I have an announcement. Oh, you announcement. have an announcement. So, oh, just, okay. So I guess I'll call this an announcement. But All right. So it really may be just a piece of news, but it feels like an announcement. So, so I've been talking periodically about the aggregation program that a large number of Franklin County towns are looking at. And um, we... Um, the, the, the bid period ended last week and we got in one bid from one of the aggregators called Colonial and then they sent us a, their proposal and, and uh, we've all read their proposal. There's a, there's a representative committee with people from about the 13 towns who wanted to participate in choosing the broker. There are a few other towns who seem interested but they kind of said we'll leave that up to you guys. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we're meeting with Colonial tomorrow. So. And, and we all have questions that we'd like to talk to Colonial about. And the, you, Colonial is the broker for the other 
four towns other than Greenfield who have aggregations here in Franklin County. And when we talk to those towns, they all seem to think Colonial was a, is a, doing a good job and, mm -hmm. and you know, helped, helped with all of the tasks of, of being a broker. And, uh, and I don't expect we'll have any issues with Colonial, and I, I don't know whether we'll decide to choose them or not, but... Mm -hmm. How but, do you, but, have, you have to advertise for that? Uh, for brokerage? No. How does that, how does that come no. out? Yeah, yeah. Well, you we, we, just, we, just already select something. So yeah, it's, it's, it's 30B exempt. Yeah, uh, because it's an energy-related contract. Oh, but but they did put out a request so, for bids. Yeah. So, so I, I wrote a grant to to get some money to have FERCOG manage this mm -hmm. piece of the project. Um, so you could say we hired FERCOG, mm -hmm. and FERCOG knows how to write RFPs mm -hmm. and evaluate the proposal. So they they put together the committee of all of the representatives from the towns. They created an RFP based upon some other similar aggregations that other groups of towns did. Uh, they distributed it and they got back the, the proposals and and they've arranged for this uh, meeting tomorrow with, with Colonial. Good. When's, when's the meeting? Uh, I think we're getting together at four o'clock among each other to talk about the questions we all have, and uh, I think they'll be there about five o'clock or mm. uh, maybe a little before then. But I can, if you want to be there, I could send you uh, the time. Yeah, I've, I've got a, um, uh, I've got a Franklin County Selectmen's Association <laughs> board meeting this, tomorrow night. There's too many meetings. Yeah, so. But but, but you know I, I you know I I don't see any. Yeah so, yeah, so so we're going to get together at four o'clock. We'll be meeting mm -hmm. with them at about uh, quarter of five to five o'clock. They'll be coming in. Yeah, Colonial Colonial does a good job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, well, thank you, Bob. Well, thank um, you, to John. Yeah, go ahead. Have we? Is it this Thursday? Was it the meeting with the planning board? There are that? there are two. The one the one coming up in just two days. There's a uh, solar project. Solar project, right? And in a week from two days from now, there's the marijuana extension yeah. here. But the, the, what time is Thursday nights? Do we know? Six o'clock. Uh, no, I have uh, yeah six o'clock. Six o'clock mm -hmm. in my calendar. Okay, that's for the large solar project on the western, south southern end of our community. Yes, southwestern. Southwestern. Okay. All right, our next meeting is scheduled for Monday the 23rd here at the town office at 6 p.m. Uh, if there's no more business to come before the board, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you.